Hello everyone, welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Friday, January 3rd through Sunday, January 5th of 2020. But as usual, please keep in mind, or I guess I should say as always, please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because it's dated for the third to the fifth doesn't mean it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Yeah, whenever you come across this reading, whenever you're guided to watch it and it resonates for you, then that is the reading for you or the message for you at that moment. Yes? Okay. Um, oh, I didn't have my bracelets on. I don't have anything else to say. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say, so I'm just going to get to the to the reading. So as I started to connect with the collective, um, I heard, all right, spirit, let's do this reading for the collective. And I heard that it's going to be a reading for the divine masculine. So my DMs out there, this most of this reading is mostly going to be for you, most likely. However, all I really have is the pre-shuffle here so far, and already it's talking to you. So... And, and this may not necessarily resonate for all divine masculines out there, um, but Spirit did did specifically say that we're talking to the DM today, so we're just going to go with what we have so far. What we have so far <laughs> is the Lovers, the Ten of Cups, and the King of Cups. <laughs> all right, so we're off to a good start. Um, in your overall energy, you have the Ten of Wands with the seven of cups but it's the scary side of the seven of cups all right what i want to say to you with this energy is some of you are really being too hard on yourself or some of you are really um freaking yourselves out there is an energy of um especially what i'm getting with this seven of cups here there is an energy of trying to figure out what to do about the past the problem is you don't really have to do anything about the past if you and and i'm talking straight up to the divine masculines out there all of you men and women that resonate with the divine masculine energy or just resonate more with masculine energy keep in mind guys that we don't have to be talking about twin flames or divine counterparts this doesn't this doesn't have to be romantic however we do have the Ten of Cups and the Lovers, so okay, fine, it, it's there, but this doesn't have to be that, because keep in mind that the Cups suit can represent anything that is emotionally fulfilling for you, and the Lovers can also represent a choice, and not necessarily a romantic choice between individual Lovers. This could just be a choice, I like to say, a choice between vice or virtue, okay? Virtue being what your heart desires, vice being what everyone else around you wants for you or thinks you should do, okay? So with this seven of cups, I am feeling an energy of what do I do about the past? But what I really want to say to you, divine masculines out there, is that if you have come to a point where you are whole and balanced enough to recognize that you have a counterpart out there, that you want to be with this counterpart, that being your divine feminine, um, and you're ready to reconcile, you're ready to make some sort of change, you're ready to reach out, you're ready to have some sort of emotionally mature or just more mature conversation, you're ready to really do this, to do the damn thing with this King of Cups energy, then there really isn't much you have, you need to do about the past. Because quite frankly, if you are in this state and this person that you have on your mind that you can't get off your mind is truly you really have this deep this deep divine soul connection that you physically feel 24 7 and you can't get away from if you're in, a, in if you're in a, an emotionally balanced and mature place then chances are your counterpart is also in an emotionally balanced and mature place and is at least ready to approach the situation with you that doesn't necessarily mean that y'all are just going to jump right back in where you left off. And to be quite honest, you probably really shouldn't because where you left off wasn't too cute, was it? <clears throat> no, but that's okay. New chapter, new year, new you, yes? So what you really need to do right now, Divine Masculine, is instead of getting caught up in the what ifs, just like your Divine Feminine may have been, may even still be in. 
okay but instead of getting it caught freaking yourself out and getting caught up in the what ifs which usually are quite illusionary instead of carrying all this burden around then what you really need to do is just set the past aside and move forward and and communicate in the way that your heart truly is guiding you to communicate towards okay because it's it's like look it's the two of you it's just the two of you now okay you know ride or die like fucking bonnie and clyde like two peas in a pod uh uh what um partners in crime i mean it's just the two of you right now and what i heard what i just heard it's really kind of always been just the two of you there were just some distractions around you but it seems that those distractions are kind of well here are some of the distractions but to me the distractions in the five of uh, the seven of cups here are illusionary it's all from the past you don't have to let it bother you if you don't want to you have this love right here it's like coming from the stars coming from the universe i mean just allow yourself to be free allow yourself to flow with this okay now for other others of you that don't necessarily resonate with like this as being a romantic situation um what I am seeing here is you do have, actually, you do have some sort of like amazing wish fulfillment, Ten of Cups opportunity that's kind of almost appearing out of nowhere for you. And maybe you're in an energy of, wait a second, no, with the Seven of Cups, no, wait, no, this can't, this can't be true. This is too good to be true. Like, no way, this, no, never in a million years. And you're burdening yourself with that. You're carrying a bunch of weight of a past person that you are no longer. You see this person it looks just like the guy that's carrying these wands here, but he's cast in stone. Like it's a stone figure. This is your, this is the old you. It's like you're trying to carry, okay, well this can resonate whether we're talking about divine counterparts or not, but someone here is trying to carry the weight or the baggage or the burden of the old self, but you're not that self anymore. You're this guy now or this girl whatever, guy or girl, it doesn't matter. King of Cups here. And you see this dolphin down here? This dolphin represents playfulness. You've got to go with the flow a little bit more. You've got to be a little more playful. You've got to lighten up. You've got to be much easier on yourself. Whatever it is, whomever it is that you were in the past, whatever it is that you went through in the past, that do, number one, that does not define you now. Number two, you are not bound by that now. Number three, you went through that and you experienced all that so that you could grow up and show up and become this individual here, this king of cups, this emotionally balanced, emotionally mature individual that you know you are, that you know you are but some of you are actively lying to yourselves, trying to cast disbelief it's like your ego is getting in the way it's like man come on you're not really that mature like you haven't really gotten that much better and you're freaking yourself out put down all these wands masculine you do not have to carry the burden of the person you were in the past you don't have you also don't have to keep looking over your shoulder i just heard that for someone out there it's like you you feel like you have to like you you're constantly looking over your shoulder like you're constantly you constantly have to watch your back but check it out for some of you out there, I really feel like you do have someone that was, that is willing to watch your back for you. That absolutely would be your divine feminine. But, but if you want to take advantage of this love that you have between the two of you, then you have got to step up and be emotionally mature and just reach out or do something. Take some sort of action because your heart is guiding you towards something, guys. Okay. But what's holding you back is carrying the burdens of the past. You don't need to do that anymore. Like literally, have you learned your lesson? Yes? Great. Then leave it back there. Leave it behind you. There's no reason to carry it any longer. As long as you learned from the situation and you are willing to step up and do better, King of Cups, then it doesn't matter what happened in the past because it was all just a part of the process to get you here. The lovers, the Ten of Cups, the King of Cups. Your past does not define you. What defines you are your actions in the present. What defines you is who you are in this moment. And that moment is going to be redefined every single day.
Every day you will get up and you will have a choice to make whether you're going to be this new improved you or you're going to slip back into the toxic bullshit. That is a conscious choice you need to make every day, but that is an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself every single day. Now, I'm not, in, I'm not inviting anyone to take up the life of a sociopath, but you get what I'm saying, right? All right, guys and gals. You know, someone reached, someone mentioned, reach out. Um, it was, I believe it was on the Virgo reading for January. Someone left a comment saying that she, as the divine masculine, reached out to her twin who is male and is the, is the divine feminine. So keep it, look like, like that's a message right there, you know, or, or that's a um, proof that, you know, this divine masculine, divine, divine feminine situation has nothing to do with gender, okay? It's all energy. But she reached out to him she was blunt and honest. She told him how he felt. She told him how, 11-11, she told him how she felt and he hit her back saying, I want this too. So masculines out there, if you are worried, if you don't know what the deal is, if you want to make a move, then make your move. Shoot your shot, bro. The feminine has been sitting back here waiting for you to say something. Now I understand, I understand. For some of you, it is a matter of, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to approach her. You don't even understand, Eric. The way things left off between us, man, it's almost as if it feels like she never wants to speak to me again. Okay, I understand that. I mean, I was in that energy for a while and I'm the feminine here, okay? But I needed to get over it and I did that eventually I got there I personally don't really know I don't want to like throw out just this random advice here because I don't know your specific situations but I did hear specifically maybe, maybe talk to friends if you have some sort of like mutual friends maybe you can like gauge how this person feels through your friends maybe you could even ask for, like, I, I, I'm just gonna say this guys because I heard it so I'm gonna say it but maybe you could just ask your friends for help Talk to your friends about it. If you have mutual friends, I wouldn't. I would be as sincere as possible. Don't try to be shady. Don't try to hide nothing. And if it comes down to it and they're like, why are you asking? Like, what do you even care for? Then you tell the truth. I love this person. I want to be with this person. I want to make things right with this person. They might give you a little bit of hell. But don't you think it's worth it? If you truly love this person, if you truly want to be with this person, then why is it not worth a little... a little backlash, I guess I could say. Now, if those friends start to get really nasty and narcissistic and sociopathic or whatnot, whatever, like if those friends really start to get toxic, then pull back. Pull back and instead ask the universe for it. Some of you may just want to communicate with the universe completely and just help the divine to help you align with the circumstance and situation. Take that ask your friends for advice bit with a grain of salt. Like be very discerning about that because now I'm now that I really feel through it, I feel like there are some out there that have yes, you still have some 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 mutual friends, but that uh, that's pretty toxic. It's pretty toxic. And that's just for some of you, okay? So take this with a grain of salt, guys, right? This is a general reading and I'm just speaking through what I'm feeling and I'm channeling for a ton of, like thousands of people here. So like, but the real message here is divine masculine. If you are ready and willing, if you are in a place to reach out and say something to shoot your shot, but to do it for real, then follow through, follow through with it. Don't allow the past to stop you. Don't allow the past to define you. The one thing the Divine Feminine has been asking you for, for the longest time, is for you to just be real with her. Just be authentic. That's all she wants. She doesn't want to play games. She doesn't want to wear masks. She doesn't want to go out in public and have to pretend that you two aren't a thing. She doesn't want to have to deal with you potentially sliding up in someone else's DMs and all that shit. Like, no. If you're going to be with her, you're going to be with her, the divine feminine, no one else. And she's not saying this to control you. 
She doesn't want to control you. At least if she's balanced and whole within herself, she has no intentions of ever controlling you. Why? Because she doesn't want anyone controlling her. But she also is not going to compete. And she's not going to take anything less than she knows she is, she is worthy of. And let me tell you, for the collective that I've been channeling for for some time now, we know our worth. And we're not taking anything less. Is that a direct challenge? Sure. Is that a challenge that you are capable of, of, of meeting? Absolutely. And she knows that. And she's going to hold you to it. Okay? Like, I'm trying... <laughs> I am trying so hard to be encouraging here right now, but I'm probably freaking some of you out. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I don't mean to do that, but it's the truth. Because let me tell you guys, Divine Masculine, if this is your true friend, twin flame or divine counterpart or soulmate or whatever, fuck the label. But if this person is your person truly 100%, they love you will damn near be willing to go to the ends of the earth for you. But you have to step up and you have to show up. Okay? Do not let your past define you. Ooh, okay. So, let me give this one more shuffle. And then we're going to get into the rest of the message for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Look, and as I finish, we have the Queen of Wands, which represents the Divine Feminine, and the Ten of Cups. So a message for the Divine Feminine out there. Stay in your receptive mode, because you are manifesting this. Okay? I mean, you have your own work to do, but... You know. You know. All right. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of January, February 3rd through Sunday, January 5th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids, we're giving this three shuffles, and I'm still talking to the Divine Masculine Collective, I believe. Three or five? Five is better. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do... We're actually... We're going to do five shuffles. Okay. Um, but yes, I'm still speaking to the Divine Masculine Collective here. One. And you know, we're doing five shuffles specifically because five is a number of change, and there is a hell of a lot of change in the air, you guys, okay? Two. Yeah. This is coming through very strongly. This really needs to be a, a message for the Divine Masculine Collective. That's the way Spirit is guiding me through this right now. So, all my DMs out there, this is for you, okay? That was three. This is four. Great change is coming, my friend. And five. But you have to step up. You have to take that leap of faith. You have to send that message. You have to make it clear, is what I'm saying. Like, there is, there is no room for uncertainty here. Yes, Ten of Swords. <laughs> Ten of Swords with the sun. The worst is behind you. The sun may feel like, okay, all right. I mean, I'm going to shuffle, but there's a message coming through here. You see on the Ten of Swords how the sun is eclipsed? <clears throat> okay. And then if you look here on the sun, it's like you're, you're cordoned off. You're in quarantine almost, right? This is a good thing. How this could this possibly be a good thing, Eric? Because you needed to heal. You needed to handle some things on your own. You couldn't, your, your feminine couldn't be there to handle it for you or even help you with it. You had to find that strength in, within yourself. You had to find the solution on your own. And right now you're allowing, you're allowing the negativity of the situation to eclipse the fact that it's actually over. Stop focusing so much on this old self, this old individual that you used to be that's got all those ten swords draw, stabbed through it. Stop focusing on that. Layer, put your focus on the future, okay? Because the sun is trying to come out, all right? Okay. 
Let's see what else we've got for the weekend. Ooh, oh shit. Okay, well, your feminine just popped right out, but she popped out as the Queen of Swords. Okay, I'm gonna do one more shuffle here. Take this one, okay? Weekend edition for the collective. Okay, we're gonna stop here. Overall energy is the Knight of Pentacles, okay. The Knight of Pentacles with the Five of Wands. All right. Okay, 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 y'all. All right, so you have the first two cards that popped out here are the Queen of Swords and the Four of Swords. Now, this is a message for the feminine, okay? Fall back, chill out, all right? It's not as bad as you think. I'm not asking, I mean, you can stay in your Queen of Swords energy if, because the Queen of Swords is an energy of discernment, okay? But you need to pull back a little bit. You need to not be so damn aggressive, all right? Because he or she is trying. You have the two of pentacles with that dog and pony show energy, okay? You see how this individual is like keeping up appearance here, is putting on a, come on you, come on, shuffle, Sh not shuffle, um, focus. Anyway, you see how this person is kind of like putting on a show for these people up here? There it goes. Well, he's also going through, he or she is also going through a transformation, a death and rebirth, because you have death here. This is the death card, but it's the card, it's the side of rebirth. So look, feminine, there are some elements to the masculine's life that he just can't drop altogether. There are certain things that he has to deal with, that he has to keep up the show on. And for some of you, I'm picking up that this has to do with your livelihood because if you if, I, I don't know if you've watched this yet if you haven't please go ahead and do so but i did a twin flame reading back in december um <clears throat> i think it was i think i put it up on like the 22nd of december or something but the message came through that the masculine is very much in an energy of trying to to figure out how he's going to provide a life for the two of you and we know the feminine really is not so doesn't really care about the money, doesn't really care about a big house and, and all the, the opulence and whatnot, but the masculine wants to provide that. That's The masculine is the physical realm. That's his domain, that's his thing, that's what he does. I mean, he's the master of the physical realm while you, feminine, are the master of the spiritual realm, right? So let the masculine do what he does best. Let him provide for you. Stop sending all these daggers at him because he's not coming forward in the way that you you think he should or the way that you, you want him to. Now, keep in mind, guys, I'm not asking you to not be discerning with the Queen of Swords here, okay? But also you have got to fall back because he's not trying to hurt you. He is, in fact, he or she is going through a transformation, a rebirth, okay? Look, the Ten of Swords has come back out, but I like how it's come out again. You have the Ten of Swords now, with just the body, but you also have the Ace of uh, Ace of Wands. There is inspiration here, inspiration to move forward in a new, brand new direction. This Ace of Wands, especially in this deck, kind of reminds me of a tower moment because you see how that lightning is striking the tree back there in the distance. It reminds me of a tower moment because the tower is struck by lightning. This is the spark of creation. This is that that impetus, that inspiration to move forward to move in a new direction the past is behind you this is not going to happen as quickly as you might want because the overall energy is the knight of pentacles and i feel like that is advice however you do have the knight of swords here which is a very fast moving energy be careful guys do not rush into anything you have the knight of swords with the six of pentacles so there is a strong desire to make amends to make things right to bring reciprocity into your situation. But the strongest thing I'm getting here is with how defensive the feminine is being right now or has been or whatnot, whatever. It's freaking him the fuck out, guys. 
<laughs> and I'm not trying to call the, the masculine a scaredy cat here, okay? Because with this, with this Queen of Swords energy, she can be really fucking mean and real scary. Think of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Off with their heads for the most insignificant thing. You step out of line in the smallest way, off with their head. You don't compliment her dress, off with their head. You don't like the color of the roses, off with their head. You make the smallest suggestion, off with their head. You breathe the wrong way, off with their head. You see what I'm saying? Listen here, I know this energy very well, feminine. I know it very well. I was here too. But then I had to realize, I had to be honest with myself and I had to admit that I'm not gonna escape this connection and that I actually do really love this person. So, I had to admit to myself that the more I stayed in this energy, the more I prolonged the process, the healing process, really. All right? So there is definitely a strong amount of communication that wants to come in here about reconciling and reciprocity. But I would highly recommend that you not move as quickly as you possibly can and instead take the advice of this Knight of Pentacles energy. And the Five of Wands is on the other side of the deck um, in your overall energy. But this, we, I feel like we really were, all, were talking about this because it's a sense of, um, it, it's like an ego situation. It's inner conflict also, okay? And a lot of that inner conflict is coming through in the form of wondering if you should take it this slow or not. Because you do have this Knight of Swords energy and there is this sort of, I really feel like the masculine is feeling this sort of pressure on having to do things at a certain time, um, at a certain pace, at a certain speed. But if, that, if your feminine is demanding that of you or you're even demanding that of yourself, then that's coming from a place of ego and not alignment. Because your ego wants things to happen in a certain way, at a certain time, in a certain f rate, at a certain rate, whatever, at a certain speed. But spirit knows, your spirit and your higher self know it's going to happen eventually. It's going to happen anyway when the timing is right. Okay? Alrighty. Okay, we're going to get into some clarification now. I want to get into this Queen of Swords, Four of Swords energy. And I know this is mostly supposed to be mostly a message for the Divine Masculines out there, but this, I really want to talk to the, to the feminines here about this. Queen of Swords, Four of Swords. And look, I'm not, I, I really want you guys to know, I'm not trying to pass any judgment on anybody here. Oh, look, the Six of Pentacles. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. That's cool. Um, I'm not really trying, I'm really not trying to pass any judgment on anybody here because I was, I used to be in this energy. All right. So I get it. And I'm not trying to rush you out of it either. But some of you are, are really on that hard, hard, hard defensive. And in the end, it's really, you're really only hurting yourself too. Because if this truly is your twin flame, if this truly is your divine counterpart, then you're the, the more you spew hatred and animosity and resentment towards this person, the more you're actually even spewing that to yourself. And this is another message that came out in that twin flame reading. So if you haven't watched that twin flame, twin flame reading back from December and you resonate with this journey, this message, whatnot, whatever, I highly recommend you do so. It's titled the best reading so far or the best reading to date or something like that. But this message came through in that reading as well. You cannot hold unconditional love for yourself while spewing hatred for another period like it literally it doesn't matter if it's your twin flame it doesn't matter if it's your mother father sister brother aunt uncle cousin uh, your, your best friend your your arch enemy you know the, the the annoying the annoying person down the street it doesn't matter who they are 
You cannot hold unconditional love for yourself and still spew hatred for another. Why? Because we are all connected. Fuck a twin flame. We are all connected. Okay? So the more you spew this anger, this hatred, the animosity, you are actually spewing that towards yourself also. So you have got to fall back, boo. I'm not asking you to not be angry. I'm not asking you to, to not feel through your emotions. I'm not asking you to not honor how you truly feel. What I am asking you for, and what the Divine Masculine is asking you for, is a break. A chance to reconcile. It's what it actually is what I just heard, a chance to reconcile. I'm gonna give this three shuffles and then we'll see, we'll see. So this Queen of Swords and this Four of Swords here. Queen of Swords, Four of Swords for my Divine Feminines out there. All right, let's get some advice for the Divine Feminines out there in this Queen of Swords, Four of Swords energy. Ooh. Oh, the Hermit, y'all. All right, look. Feminines, I'm about to break it down for y'all, and they're, you're probably not going to like this. <laughs> King of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. All right? Um, that's your Divine Masculine. That's your Divine Counterpart right there. However, you can... Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, Feminine, I'm about to really break it down for you right now. You got both of the cards, in my opinion as a reader, that represent self-discovery and re-identifying yourself and self- and, um, come on, guys. Come on. Will you focus, please? Come on. But you have the Hermit to the Page of Wands, and then with the Moon. Okay, the hermit is an energy of having to go within, doing some soul searching. The page of wands is rediscovering yourself, re-identifying yourself, realigning yourself, reorienting yourself, reinventing yourself, also sending a message. But I see the page of wands as a minor arcana version of the hermit. And then you have the moon. Divine feminines out there, there are some truths that you need to admit to yourself. One of, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, okay? And I'm going to share part of my message, or part of my story here, part of my journey. One of the things that I really started to recognize fairly early, well, not fairly, maybe about a year or so into the heat of, my, of the connection with my twin flame, right? I started to recognize just how much we mirror each other. Like, I started to recognize a lot of the things that I was really angry at him for I was turning around and doing myself, or I was expressing in some similar way myself. That was a hard lesson to come to. That was a hard thing to admit to myself. There are, look, feminine, you are not immaculate here. I'm not trying to say you're not of divine nature, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, but I am saying that you are, okay, not, let's not say immaculate, maybe the rest of the right word is you're not innocent here. You're not fully innocent here. This is a two-way street. There may have been some situations that your divine masculine may have done, that have engaged in, or there are some things that maybe your divine masculine may have, that may have done or may have said to you that are pretty fucking shitty. Okay, okay. But you are not fully 100% innocent. You also were displaying some toxic energies too that you need to look at. And what I feel like here, and, the, and this is a, y'all, I'm saying this with all the love I can must, like with all the love I have in my heart and all the respect, I'm saying this to you because you need to hear it. I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. You need to hear it. It's coming out. So I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you, okay? And if you're watching this reading, then you're watching this for a reason. But the, I, feel, I really feel like for those of you that are really heavily rooted and stuck in this Queen of Swords energy, and the universe is really saying to you, boo, you need to fall back, it's because there are some things that you need to come to terms with that you need to start admitting to yourself. I'll say this also, one of the things that I needed to really admit to myself was the fact that I do actually really, really love this person. 
I was so angry, but it's because I love him so much. And I was hurt. And I hated the fact that I still loved him. No matter what we were going through, I hated the fact that I still loved that man. Like, I might start crying. <laughs> like, so much so, like, to the point where no one else compared to him. And I went out there and I tried to find, I, I literally said, you know what, fuck you. I'm manifesting someone else. I'm gonna go find someone else. I'm gonna go date someone else. I'm gonna go fuck someone else. And it was never satisfying, ever, ever. It just left me feeling empty. And then I would say to myself, okay, fine. Well, fine, okay, fine. I'll just find, I mean, maybe that was just wasn't the right person and I would try someone else and it was the same thing until I admitted to myself that this was the guy I wanted all along. The king of pentacles. The king to my queen. Now, for you feminines, this king of pentacles energy is a representation of being well manifested. Knowing yourself. Being secure and firm. I'm hearing secure and firm in your boundaries. Some of you have really awful boundaries right now. And that has led you into some circumstances and some situations that have put you in this Queen of Swords energy. Again, I'm not trying to pass judgment on you. And again, that is part of your journey. But again, there are some things that you need to admit to yourself. Like you, like literally, some of you really need to start looking at how your actions may have, have may have influenced some things. Okay. Uh, hey, I did some pretty shitty things too. I was pretty toxic as well. I am not innocent. Neither are you. This is a two-way street. We all have our, our things that we need to heal and grow from. And let me say this again. I did some shitty things too. I am not innocent and neither are you. Okay. All right. Let's move forward. Masculines, going back to you here, I want to talk about this Two of Pentacles and this death. I, I, what I really want to say is this rebirth energy. Because this is the death card, but it's the, the side in which we see the rebirth. And, you know, keeping up some sort of appearance. I'm going to reshuffle and give this three shuffles here. And I just want to get some advice for you. Okay. All right, fine. We're going to do one more shuffle. Two of Pentacles death, but also rebirth, yeah? Let's get some clarity on this for you here, masculine, from my DMs out there. Justice. Okay, first of all, what you need, to, ooh, and the eight of wands, excellent. First of all, masculines, what you, oh, and the lovers, stop it. First of all, masculines, what you need to know here is justice is absolutely going to be served. But you do have to roll with the punches, maybe even try, maybe even keep up some sort of appearance for the time being. There's a, there's a, because the, the two of pentacles is coming out again. There is a sense of balance here. Um, maybe a sense of juggling actually is what I wanted to say. Feminines, don't freak out, okay? He's not juggling you and like another woman or another man or some shit like that. Like don't, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about life elements right now. We're talking about career and finances even. We're talking about the physicality of life. As masculine, as you are going through this rebirth process, you need to keep in mind, spirit is saying very clearly that justice is absolutely going to be served, okay? That is at the forefront of this movement that you're making, of this rebirth process that you're making. That is literally leading the way. So just have faith, regardless of what is happening here. Just have faith that justice is absolutely, absolutely going to be served. The scales will be balanced. 
the universe has that on lock for you, okay? You don't have to worry about that. There is absolutely a new opportunity coming. You just need to move slowly and make sure that you're remaining in balance, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, okay? Things are going to move fairly quickly, okay? That eight, you do have this ace of wand, eight of wands here. It may not necessarily be as quick as you want it to, or maybe as quick as your ego wants it to, but this Eight of Wands is saying that, especially with how I put it here, with the Eight of Wands right in front of justice, it's like um, what I'm seeing is like a, a, a plowing vehicle. You know, the ones that, the, the, big, the big trucks that have like that, um, the triangular uh, a plow in front of it and it moves and it just plows things away at an angle like like that right that's what i'm seeing with this eight of wands and justice here the space is being cleared for you to come forward and make some sort of offer to take up this opportunity okay you just have to stay balanced two of pentacles now i was instructed to take the top three cards it is the five of pentacles the three of cups and the knight of cups there is a desire to reconcile here, but you are still kind of dealing with some sort of feelings of inadequacy. But don't fret. You are absolutely adequate. The lovers. This person loves you. This person is your divine counterpart. This person is your soulmate. This person is your twin flame. Whatever. I mean, they're just fucking labels, but the person loves you. And actually, if you, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, masculine. You can really tell that your feminine loves you with how angry you make her, because if she wasn't, if she didn't get angry, so angry with you sometimes, then that's just a sign that you know, she doesn't really care. Think about it. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm making a, a really generalized statement, but I know that's something I figured out for myself. I mean, I don't often, like, people don't often get under my skin. Sometimes people do. It depends on what they do. But I've noticed that the people that I love the most can really make me the angriest. Okay, Spirit is kind of saying, all right, Eric, but that's still kind of a generalized statement. Maybe you shouldn't. Uh, well, all right, but, I, but you get what I'm saying, right? What I'm feeling here as the degree to which you anger her is actually a good indication of the degree in which, to which she loves you. And it's probably the same for you, right? Because if you didn't love this person so much, they probably wouldn't be able to trigger you, trigger you so hard, right? <laughs> Isn't love a funny little thing? <laughs> All right, kids. All right, kids. Um, I want to get a closing message from Spirit, from the Golden Universal Tarot, and then we're going to get you some Oracle guidance here. And I really feel like it's coming from the Lightworker Oracle for this weekend, okay? Closing message from Spirit for the Chitlins here on this divine path. Let me give this one more shuffle. Okay, spirit, closing message, closing advice. What do you have to say? Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to take the top three. Okay. We have the high priestess as the overall energy. Um, the cards that fell out are the Knight of Cups, the Four of Wands, the Tower, and the Ten of Swords. Look at that, guys. The Knight of Cups, again. The Ten of Swords, again. But the Tower and the Four of Wands. Whatever, what Spirit is saying here, guys, is whatever you have been through throughout this process, whatever this Ten of Swords represents here for you, it was meant to happen so that you could break down the structures between you. The, the karma is basically what I'm feeling with this tower energy, all the negative karma that has built up between the two of you over lives, centuries, whatever, however you want to describe it, all of that 
toxic energy between the two of you. And with the Four of Wands energy here, Spirit is kind of saying that it's only brought you, it's made you two stronger, both as individuals, but it's also making you, it's in an effort to make you stronger together. Because think about it, guys, if you really can pull yourselves out of this and get through this, y'all can get through anything. It's only making you stronger. That's what you really need to recognize here. Regardless of whether or not you're actually speaking to this person, if you're not speaking to this person right now, then y'all are still in separation and you need to do your own individual work. You need to come to terms with your own individual bullshit, right? But it's only an effort, in an effort to make you guys stronger as, whole, uh, uh, as individuals and then stronger together. This is a union card, guys. Four of Wands, 11, 11. The both of you need to reach that 11 energy if you want to see it that way. The both of you need to reach that 11 on your own so that you can come together and create this foundation. Have this union. But feminines, you got to stop blaming your masculine for every little thing. You have got to start looking at yourself. This is a journey of self-discovery. Knight of Cups, offers of love. Spirit is highly suggesting that offers go out there if you are feeling guided to. If you're feeling guided to, reach out in some way. Even if it has to be some sort of subliminal message at first. Whatever, follow your own path, follow your own guidance, follow your own heart, okay? Then we have I was, I was asked to pull the top three cards of the deck. We have the Seven of Wands, the Empress, and the Chariot. The Empress has barriers, blockage, uh, boundaries around her right now. Sure, the feminine does, okay. But the strongest message that I'm getting here is number one, the feminine wants to be defended and protected. And obviously she's gonna do that for you, masculine. But she wants, she wants you to put up your, your healthy boundaries and come for her let her know that you are the you want to be this person for her also the message here is to hold your ground stand your ground keep firm boundaries and move forward because there is an energy of abundance and unconditional love surrounding you so just move forward okay Okay, let's get your oracle guidance. Last shuffle here, kids, and then we will get your oracle guidance for the weekend, yeah? Here we go. There it is right there. Ooh, card number 31, alchemical mutation. Now this does boil down to a four. Four is about, fo about foundation, yeah? Here we go, kids. Card number 31, alchemical mutation. Your spiritual growth is changing your mind, body, and soul. It is very real. It is helping you fulfill all aspects of your divine destiny. It is awakening spiritual talents and attracting in new energies. This process will bring tremendous joy and satisfaction. I'm gonna read this whole thing. The body changes as light enters. Alchemy is catalyzed and transformation happens. Sometimes the appearance of the body changes. There will be change in how the body feels, responds, acts, and creates. Radiance increases. Lightness of being increases. If you have clairvoyant vision, you will see the increase in light as though the person is actually lit up from within. They are. Spiritual abilities become grounded in the body and the person can channel healing energy just as naturally as they would set at the dinner table. 
The spirit becomes a living reality in the body, and the material world is experienced as an extension of the divine light. This alchemy is an empowering gift of love. Symptoms of this process can at times be challenging. They may include headaches and other aches and pains, flu-like symptoms, and inexplicable and nearly overwhelming fatigue that lasts for days, and then suddenly vanishes along with a surge of new energy. We may also experience pinging in the ears, increased sensitivity to light or sound, hormonal imbalance, and hot flushes, or hot flashes, excessive sexual energy, mental obsession or mood swings, aggression, and unintentionally harsh reactions to people. If you have been experiencing any of the above and wondered if these or other unusual symptoms could be a direct result of increased spiritual energy affecting the body, then the answer is that this is very likely. You are encouraged to source whatever professional health support you need to take care of your body. Also, consider using the, fo the following simple practices to ease away the side effects of divine alchemy taking place in you. These simple practices include getting regular rest. Additional sleep is a powerful way for the body and mind to heal and repair, integrate and reorganize. Allow time for physical exercise, which can help release excess energy, especially if you need to feel mentally, or I'm sorry, especially if you tend to feel mentally congested. Take some time away from meditation, spiritual studies, or discussions and energy work. Instead, simply be in nature or rest. If you work with colors, then take a break for a short time, only working with very soft, subdued, white, or colorless light. If you have a tendency to push yourself with spiritual work, learning to take time off on regular occasions will help you recover more quickly and suffer less. Finally, working with cooling energy, not cold, but refreshing, as a way to discharge excess heat can be extremely beneficial to body and mind. You can do this by sitting in the shade or in a room that feels cool and relaxing, or even by cooling your hands before an air conditioner or fan, and then using your fingertips to transfer cool and healing energy by lightly touching your chest, back of your neck, and back of your head, ears, and forehead. Yes, guys? So this card here, your oracle card here, is speaking to the transformation that you're going through. Okay, so now for the feminines out there, I understand the aggression with that Queen of Swords. Okay, this was speaking directly to that. But you got to take a break and you got to be honest with yourself. Masculines, you're going through this transformation too. And that could be why you have this Knight of Swords aggressive, communicative type energy that's flowing through you. But you need to take it easy. You need to take... <laughs> I heard you need to take it down a notch, maybe. Okay, that's fine, whatever. And go with the flow. Step by step, pace by pace. Do not rush into anything. All right, guys. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee on Monday morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye.